let us understand that what makes a particular compound aromatic. In fact, let me tell you that if you take any compound in this universe, any compound if you pick up in this universe, you can categorize those organic compounds in three categories. The three categories are aromatic, anti-aromatic and non-aromatic. So aromatic is something that we will study, right? The moment you understand aromatic, you will see there is a complementary gift that comes along with the aromatic structure study is you will automatically understand anti-aromatic and non-aromatic, right? So let's understand our journey for aromatic compound and then we will start with anti-aromatic and non-aromatic, okay? So let's talk about the conditions of aromaticity. The first very important condition, which I'm sure you noticed in the very definition of aromatic compounds itself is it has to be cyclic. Cyclic compound, it has to be cyclic, right? For example, let's set our base with benzene. So if you have benzene in your head, it will be very clear to you. Benzene is the famous aromatic compound, okay? So let's see what is special about benzene. If you remember, benzene is of course cyclic. You can't forget this. You know that benzene is the famous structure of organic chemistry. So you know it's cyclic. So have a look. First condition for an aromatic compound is it has to be cyclic. You can see a perfect cycle here. You can see that if I start from one carbon, I reach back the same carbon. So it's a ring, right? So it has to be cyclic. For a compound to be aromatic, it has to be a cyclic compound. That's first condition. Second, generally all atoms are sp2 hybridized. So the other very important condition for aromatic compound is you will see that the atom which is a part of the ring should be sp2 hybridized, right? Generally it will always be sp2 hybridized, okay? At least for your syllabus you will see that it is sp2 hybridized just like in benzene isn't it you know that in benzene pick up any carbon if you like what will be the hybridization it is going to be sp2 so if i talk about hybridization being sp2 you know the geometry is what is the geometry sp2 trigonal planar planar that means if you put the benzene on one paper, you will see that all the carbons are in one plane, right? So, planarity is very, very important. How to understand planarity? Look at this. It's a beautiful way of understanding. All the carbons are lying in the same plane, right? So, all the carbons in benzene are sp2 hybridized. So two conditions should be absolutely crystal clear. Cyclic, sp2 hybridization, planarity. Third one is conjugated system. You are now well acquainted with conjugated system. There's a double, single, double, single, double, single. This kind of a chemistry is a conjugated system where two double bonds are separated by a single bond. So there has to be conjugation and you know that conjugation is not restricted just to the pi bonds, just to the double bonds. There can be conjugation of a lone pair with a double bond. There can be conjugation of a plus with a double bond. So, conjugated system, you're well aware of it. Let's see it in benzene only. Can you see that? We have a double bond, a single bond, a double bond, a single bond, a double bond, a single bond. Perfect conjugation of three pi bonds is what you see, right? So, the two pi bonds are separated by a single bond in benzene is something that you're well aware of. So, conjugated system has to be there. These are the three things that you already know. Now, fourth is the most important point in the conditions of aromaticity. The fourth condition is it should follow Huckel's rule. Now, this may come as a new point to you 
you know what is cycle, you know what is sp2 hybridization, you know what is conjugation, but Huckel's rule is something probably you're hearing for the first time. So let's understand this fourth point in more details. So for it, I want you to take a look at this, that Huckel's rule is the rule that helps us in actually determining the aromaticity. These three conditions is something, the first cyclic, second, that it has it has to have sp2 hybridization right uh, for your syllabus i can say it has to have sp2 hybridization third you will see there has to be conjugation fourth is huckel's rule so let me tell you that this is the rule that helps in determining the aromaticity the most important point and what does it say it says that in if a cycle if there is a cyclic compound so if a cyclic planar and conjugated molecule has 4n plus 2 pi electrons, then it is aromatic. So fourth condition is actually the most important condition, which says that above three conditions has to be there. And if these three conditions are there and the system has 4n plus 2 pi electrons, then it will be aromatic. What is this n here? N is any whole number, it can be 0, 1, 2, 3 and so forth. Pi electrons. So, you need to see that how many electrons are there which are getting actually delocalized. The pi electrons is what you have to now see in a particular compound. So, that's actually something that we have to learn today to understand Huckel's rule in details. And if you understand Huckel's rule, aromaticity is going to be on your fingertips. So let's see the number of pi electrons in benzene because benzene is something that you can relate to very easily, right? So if you already have some constructs and from those already pre-constructs, if you're developing a concept, that becomes very simple then. So benzene is something that you already know. And if I ask you how many pi electrons are there, what will be your answer? How many electrons are getting delocalized? What will be your answer? So I am sure that you can see the six pi electrons out here. Six pi electrons. So six pi electron. Is it satisfying Huckel's rule? Of course, it is cyclic. Of course, all the carbons are sp2 hybridized. So all the carbons are planar. Of course, you know that there is conjugation. Now, fourth point, which is Huckel's rule. Is benzene satisfying Huckel's rule? For that, we need to put this formula, 4n plus 2 pi electrons should be there. Put n, like I told you, n is any number, which is a whole number. It can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. So let me put n equal to 1. So if I put n equal to 1, 4 into 1 plus 2 is 6. So if there are six pi electrons, then yes, it will be aromatic. Benzene is absolutely aromatic. Like I told you, benzene is something that you're already aware of and it's the famous aromatic compound. So are you able to understand the four conditions out here when we talk about benzene? The first condition, it is cyclic. The second, it is planar. All carbons, atoms are sp2 hybridized. Third condition, it is conjugated. You can see that the pi bond and the other pi bond is separated by one single bond, right? Only in benzene, but you know there can be different types of conjugation. So uh, make sure that the conjugated system is something that you have come prepared with because that's what I'm going to utilize in today's session. And the fourth, the most important rule that it follows Huckel's rule. Why? Because you can see that the pi electrons which are coming out is six pi electrons. And if you put n equal to one, we get six pi electrons. So yes, benzene is aromatic. And like benzene today, we're going to see many, many, many more aromatic structures. Okay. But before I begin many, many, many more aromatic structures, let me also take the opportunity of introducing anti-aromatic now. For anti-aromatic, you will see the three conditions that we have just done in aromatic are as it is, as it is. So let's now look at the picture of anti-aromatic, try to understand anti-aromatic, and then we will take up different sorts of examples. So these three conditions is something that is there in aromatic also and arom anti-aromatic also. Hence, 
Hakkal rule is the determining factor. Now you understand why am I focusing on Hakkal's rule so much? Why am I focusing on 4n plus 2 pi electrons should be there so much? Because that's what is going to make a difference. Whether a compound is going to be anti-aromatic and whether a compound is going to be aromatic. That's going to make huge difference. Huge difference. The difference be between the black and white, that much difference. Because, let me tell you, right now, anti-aromatic, the name only suggests that it's just going to be the opposite of aromatic. Right? So, the three conditions are going to be absolutely same. Fourth condition is there should be 4n pi electrons, where n cannot be zero now. So it can be any natural number. It can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so forth. Because if you put n equal to 0, then that means there is no pi electron. That's not the condition. There has to be pi electrons and those pi electrons has to be the multiple of 4. It can be 4. There can be 8 pi electrons. There can be 12 pi electrons. Right? So please understand the fourth condition very well in order to understand anti-aromatic that there should be 4n pi electrons where n can be 1, 2, 3 and so forth. And n cannot be equal to 0. Let me show an example to you so that it is there in your head with the proper reinforced fashion. Before I start giving you, you know, a flood of examples wherein you would have to tell me whether a compound is anti-aromatic or aromatic or in fact even non-aromatic. So we will just see non-aromatic in a bit but let me first give you the example for anti-aromatic. Keep these conditions in mind. The fourth condition very very important. 4n pi electron has to be there and n cannot be equal to zero. So have a look. I have given you cyclo buta 1,3-diene. Name coming your way. So in this cyclobuta 1,3-diene, please see it is cyclic. Please see all the carbons. You know, right? We do not include pi in hybridization. The pi bond is not included in hybridization. And do not exclude this hydrogen. It's very much here. Do not underestimate the power of common man and hydrogen out here. You know, best friend of carbon is hydrogen. So this is also sp2. This is also sp2. This is also sp2. This is also sp2. So planarity is there. You can see the cyclic compound is there. Conjugation is there. Pi, single, pi, single. Conjugation is also there. Right? And if you count the pi electrons, how many are there? How many pi electrons are there? Of course, the moment you see, you know the answer. There are four pi electrons, isn't it? So if there are four pi electrons, it becomes the perfect example of anti-aromatic. So if you put here n equal to 1, you get 4. 4 pi electron means it is anti-aromatic. Cool? Now, can we quickly do non-aromatic also so that I can give you different varieties of question in which you would have to judge whether a particular compound is aromatic, anti-aromatic or non-aromatic. And that will give you a great understanding of the conditions. And that's what the agenda is. Agenda today is simple. We need to understand from the very core aromaticity today. So, non-aromatic is again very simple. The compounds which are neither aromatic nor anti-aromatic. You know how to judge aromatic? Yes. Cyclic? What if something is non-cyclic? It becomes non-aromatic. What if there is no sp2 hybridization, there is sp3 hybridization? It becomes non-aromatic. What if there is no conjugation? We have two pi bonds separated by two single bonds then it's a non-conjugated system. Then it is non-aromatic. So any structure which is neither aromatic nor anti-aromatic will be non-aromatic. Non. Okay. So is it going to be non-aromatic? You can see there is no cycle here. Yes, this will be non-aromatic. Simplest, right? So if you understand aromatic and anti-aromatic, you automatically get non-aromatic system.